Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a miniature ring box. Now I say it's a ring box, but really it could be used for any small item that you might have. A little treasure box, it could be a little gift box. Let's say you were giving someone a pendant for Christmas or a chain or something like that. This could be a new variation on a gift box. They're simple to make. I'm going to show you how to do it. And it all starts off with a scrap of mahogany in this case. Well, this chunk of mahogany is actually a little overkill for what we need for this project, but it measures two inches by two inches by about two and three quarters. Um, it's just a scrap chunk that was up in the rack. But the first thing that we want to do is I want to mark the center on this block of wood and we're going to take it over to the drill press and drill an inch diameter hole and we want it to be about an inch deep. Now if you wish you could be a hero and try to hold on to this block while you're drilling it but for my liking I'm going to use um, some hand screw clamps to hold it and that way uh, I can avoid the injuries to my fingers when this thing decides to grab. And at this point, we can take it over to the bandsaw. Now the main thing I want to accomplish over here is just to knock off each one of these corners because I'm going to be turning this on the lathe. So over here on the headstock side, I have used an expandable one inch collet to go inside that Forstner bit hole that we drilled that will hold it at the headstock. And just to stabilize it, I have a live center at the tailstock. So the first things first, we need to, well, turn this thing to round. So I'm going to use an easy turn tool and, uh, well, get it round. Remember that you can't go any smaller than one inch because you'll blow into the hole. I'll see how it goes proportionate wise and see what I end up with once I get it uh, roughed out. Okay, so there we have our piece turned to round. From this point, I want to start shaping the box, but this is not how long the box is going to be. If you remember, we drilled it an inch deep, the actual cavity of the box. So what I would like to do is we're going to come down an inch and a half. That will be the bottom of our box, hopefully. So the first thing here, I'm going to use a parting tool and I'm going to just cut in. I'm not going to part it off, but I want to cut in to give me basically a guide as to where the bottom of the box is. Okay, and that will now define the base of the box. So what I'd like is a slight curve here. I almost want it to be like a bulb. So I'm going to use the easy turn finishing tool and I'll start shaping this box to the way that I want it. And that is roughly the kind of shape that I want. So the next thing that I'm going to do now is this section here was not by accident. This is actually our lid. So we know that the opening is one inch wide or one inch in diameter. At this point, what I need to do is I need to cut a tenon here on the one edge of this. That will be, you guessed it, one inch in diameter. So for that, we can either use our roughing tool or we can use our parting tool, whatever you like. But at this point, we'll cut that tenon. And 
then at this point, we now need to take a measurement up here at the top of our box to see what the dimension is. And we will turn this edge here to match that diameter. All right, we are pretty much there. I want a little bit of an overhang, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm just gonna round this off. Once I get that rounded just slightly, then I can finish the shaping on the lid. And at this point, our turning is pretty much complete. So we now need to sand it. So I'm gonna work here with the sanding. I'm gonna fire through with all the grit, starting at um, 80 grit and working all the way up to 320. And when I get that sanded, I will see you after that. So with our sanding done, we can now part off our lid. Because of the expanding collet in the headstock, the body of our box will still remain intact over here. Just make sure that your lid doesn't go flying off onto the floor. And now using our finisher, we can turn the bottom of our box and then sand it just like we did the rest of it. Now one of the methods I like to use, and I used it on the lid, you didn't see it, but I'll show it to you here. We'll just get rid of this dust collection here is you want to turn your speed up a bit and using some of the shavings um, from your original turning, we're just going to burnish our piece. And you can see what a nice sheen that gives it. All right, so let's take this over to the bench and see what we have at this point. Well, at this point, I have taken a piece of ebony I have used a plug cutter and cut a 5 8 diameter plug and uh, it's out of that looks like about 1 8 thick ebony. I'm not sure of the thickness of it. It was just an off cut. So either way, we're going to glue this on top of our mahogany lid. We'll clean up any squeeze out and then let it cure. And when it's all said and done, you have the body of your box and all you need to do is add your lid. And there you have it. A small ring box or a small gift box. Guys, this is a dead simple project and it's a quick one. I mean, you can bang one of these off half an hour, 45 minutes. I can't take the full credit from this. Although it's not exactly like it, I did get my inspiration from somewhere. And what I got it from was a book called 52 Boxes in 52 Weeks. And that is by Matt Kenny. Now, you'll probably see some other boxes inspired by that book on the show. Um, I'll put a link to that book below in case you're interested in it. But what about a finish for this box? Well, we have several options here, um, but the one that I want to choose or that I've done is I've mixed up some shellac and I have given it two coats. Then I sanded it with a 600 grit wet sandpaper. From there, I gave it another coat and then gave it a, a little rough up or a smooth out, whatever you want to call it, with some very fine steel wool. And when all that was said and done, I added a coat of wax. And this is what I ended up with. Quick, easy finish, and it looks great. 
Guys, there's other options here too, of course. You could flock the interior if you wanted or add a felt lining. Um, depending on what you're going to put inside, you may want to do that to make it look a little prettier or a little uh, more presentable. There's options here. You are not limited to that one inch by one inch hole that I put in mine. You are not limited to that little tiny box. You can make it bigger if you want. Um, make it whatever size you'd like. Use your imagination and just go, go wild with it. See what you can come up with. If you don't have a lathe, don't worry about it. You know what? You can cut stuff like this on the bandsaw or on the scroll saw. All you need to do is drill that hole in the middle for your recess. You can rough cut it with the bandsaw or a scroll saw and then use an oscillating drum sander or a belt sander to smooth out around the outside to give you that cylinder surface. There's many ways that you can do it and the ones that I show you here on the show, the methods that I demonstrate, purely a suggestion. You can do whatever you like. The bottom line is just do it. Make the box yours and give it a try in your shop. And guys, I want to thank you very much for tuning in today's show. Um, we don't do a lot of lathe projects on here and I had fun with this one today. I haven't been on the lathe for a while and uh, I do like to have the chips fly. One thing I will point out, I see a lot of people online that are doing rough out and turnings and the whole nine yards um, without wearing a face shield. Um, they're doing sanding without wearing a dust mask or a respirator. And let me tell you, you guys are nuts. You really are. Um, please don't take chances with your health, with your respiratory health. Please don't take chances with getting a chunk of wood in the face and possibly messing up your eyesight. Uh, without your health and without uh, things like your eyesight, there will be no woodworking. So please take the necessary uh, precautions that you have to do, wear your proper PPE, and don't say things like, oh, it's just turning a pen, it's only small, I, I don't need the face shield this time. Yes, you do, because it only takes a little sliver to shoot into your eyeball to take away your sight for life. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Um, it's been a lot of fun this week. Hopefully we're going to see more projects from this book in the future or more inspired by this book. I hope that you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope that you're going to try this for yourself. But more importantly, I honestly hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.